What's going on everybody? My name is Tyler and today, day number nine of my 32 straight days previewing the 32 NFL teams ahead of the 2020 NFL season, I will be looking at America's team, although that's an outdated nickname, the Dallas Cowboys. Last season was, by their standards, not good at all. They missed the playoffs once again for the seventh time at a te- seventh year in 10 years for the last decade. They went 8-8, eight eight, second in the NFC East, missing out on the playoffs, as I mentioned, as the Philadelphia Eagles won that division. The Cowboys, at least on paper, have one of the top offenses in football. Dak Prescott, under center, coming off the best season of his career. He was trying to get a contract extension, did not. He signed his franchise tag. He's going to make $31.5 million or plus, I think, this season, so I don't think he's too mad. Ezekiel Elliott, one of the top running backs in all of football, although his Madden rating doesn't say that. And as receiving core, Amari Amari Cooper, one of the best in football. Michael Gallup showed signs of improvement last season. And they also had the number 17 pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. And instead of addressing maybe some needs and guys like all on the offensive line or on defense, they drafted the best player available. And that so happened to be C.D. Lamb out of Oklahoma, the wide receiver, was tagged as a guy who can go possibly top 10, definitely top 15. He fell all the way to 17. And... I think the Cowboys are going to be major beneficiaries of this. Although they lost Travis Frederick to retirement in this offseason at center, they could definitely have used one. They didn't sign one or draft one, at least of note in free agency. They still have one of the best offensive lines in football. They got Zach Martin at right guard, Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins, to name a few. And the defense is also really strong. Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith have shown to be uh, two of the top young linebackers in all football. Sean Lee, he's still there and is a um, a nice veteran presence on this roster. Demarcus Lawrence has proven to be one of the top D, uh, DNs in all football. They signed Alden Smith to play alongside Lawrence. They did lose Byron Jones in free agency, which will hurt them. But overall, I like what this defense can do if everyone is healthy. And they also brought a new coach. They got rid of Jason Garrett finally after over a decade of Jason Garrett leading this team to mediocrity. I mean, as a Giants fan, I'm not complaining, although the Giants didn't have much success themselves in the last decade. Mike McCarthy will step in, and I really like this hiring. They went outside of their organization like many people thought they should. They got the best coach probably available in McCarthy, who had a lot of success with the Green Bay Packers during his time there. And I think it really will help this team in development of Dak Prescott. Because remind you, let me remind you, McCarthy, Mike McCarthy has worked with the likes of Aaron Rodgers, uh, I believe Brett Favre for a little bit of his career. So some really great quarterbacks, and I'm sure many others that I just can't remember off the top of my head. Good for Dak Prescott to continue to develop and an offensive system that favors the quarterback. Looking at the Cowboys schedule, I'll leave it down below in the description so you can see it in full, as well as my win-loss projections. They start off week one at the Rams. A the opening of SoFi Stadium, or if you remember correctly, when AT and T Stadium opened, the Giants went into that stadium and ruined its opening. It, the Giants won that game. The Cowboys lost. It was a sour taste in their in the mouths of Cowboys fans. They could do the same thing to Rams fans in ruining the opening of their new stadium. Week two, they go on to play at home against Atlanta. Week three against Seattle on the road. So a lot of traveling in their first couple weeks. L.A., back to Dallas, to Seattle. But um, I do think they're cut out for it. I don't have them winning that game against uh, Atlanta or Seattle. But it's just because it's so tough. But I will be very excited to see those games. Week four against Cleveland. If you haven't watched my last previous episode of the Browns, you know how I feel about this matchup between two high-caliber offenses. By the way, I'll leave the whole playlist down below for this entire series if you watch my Browns preview or the other previews prior to this. Week 5, they have their first NFC East game. They'll take on the Giants at home. Just a rivalry game. These two teams always seem to play competitively against one another, so I'm very excited about that. Week 6 versus Arizona. A young up-and-coming offense with Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins taking on another really solid offense. In Dallas, this is going to be a big game for both teams. Get more about that later. Week 7 at Washington, not a huge matchup this one. There's a later matchup in the season between these two squads, which I'll make a note of. Week 8, the first matchup with the Eagles. The Eagles and the Cowboys, they are going to be the two teams fighting for NFC East supremacy. And it's whoever, if one team goes 2-0 in the Eagles-Cowboys matchups this year, they win the division, hands down. 
I don't think that's going to happen. I have him splitting their matchups, so it's going to come down to getting some help with some from other teams. But it's whoever I think whoever wins the first matchup increases the odds immensely of winning the division. Week nine, they take on the Steelers at home. I have them winning that game. This could be a tough game, though. The Steelers have a sneaky good defense and a sneaky good offense that the Cowboys could underestimate a little bit, especially if there are some injuries there. Week 10 there, they buy week, so they can play nine games before their buy, seven games after, a nice, more so in the middle. They get some nice rest. Week 11, though, they come out at the Vikings. That's going to be a tough one, given the Vikings look to be a very good team this season. I have them, I do have them winning this game, but I can definitely see them losing it, being that they will be going on the road. The only reason why I do have the Cowboys winning it mainly is because they're coming off their bye week, so they have a little bit more rest. Week 12, Thanksgiving, at home against the Redskins. This game I'm more so excited for just because it is the Thanksgiving matchup between these two teams. There have been some good matchups in the past, and maybe the Redskins could give the Cowboys a run for their money if the Cowboys get caught looking ahead to Week 13, where they take on the AFC, one of the top teams in the AFC, the Baltimore Ravens. I think the Ravens are going to annihilate the Cowboys, personally. I don't think this Cowboys defense can handle Lamar Jackson in that running game of the Baltimore Ravens. Week 14 at Cincinnati. Week 15 at Philadelphia. I mean, final matchup late in the year between these two teams. This could decide the division right here. That week right there, you could have your division crown. Probably not, given how close these two, two teams are, but it could. Week 16 versus San Francisco. This will be interesting. If San Francisco is resting some of their players late in the year, the Cowboys could win this game. If not, however, I it's going to be a rough day for the Cowboys. Finally, Week 17 at the Giants. The Giants will probably be mathematically eliminated from the playoffs at this point, but they could definitely play the spoiler to their rivals in the Cowboys. Overall, for the Cowboys, there are some really eye-opening matchups. Here are the five I'm most looking forward to. Week 2, Falcons at Cowboys, just two offenses that – could go ham against one another. Yes, I just use go ham because apparently that's what the kids are using nowadays. God, that was horrible on my end. Um, but two offenses that could really high caliber. You got two very solid quarterbacks and Matt Ryan and Dak Prescott. Some nice receiving cores. Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley and Hayden Hurst on one end. C.D. Lamb, Omari Cooper, and Michael Gabb on the other. And then two, when healthy, Top five, top ten running backs in the NFL, Todd Gurley for Atlanta, Ezekiel Elliott for Dallas. Week 11 against uh, the Vikings, that's another game I'm looking forward to coming off their bye week. Once again, two really solid running backs in Elliott and Dalvin Cook. Two solid quarterbacks, Prescott and Kirk Cousins. Some solid offensive receiving games. So two evenly matched teams, it's going to come down to, I think, one or two possessions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Week 13 against the Ravens. I just don't think the Cowboys can handle this Ravens offense at all. I hope they prove me wrong. Actually, I don't hope they prove me wrong personally. But I would like to see them prove me wrong because this will be a nice test for them to see, can they make a run in the playoffs? I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they're going to finish 9-7, and seven, missing it once again. But if they win this game, 10-6 and six could be enough to get them there. Week 16 against the 49ers, I, ha- I do have the Cowboys losing this game. And that's strictly because the 49ers defense is just so, so good. And I think they, just given what they did last year, I think it will carry over this year. It, but it'll be interesting to see. Maybe Dak Prescott could have, he can realize, hey, we could possibly miss the playoffs because of this game. So he turns on another gear and can be what the final push is for them. Week 17 against the Giants in New York. We've seen it in the past. Cowboys-Giants games in week 17 but at the side of season. This could be another one, one of those weeks where if the Giants, they might not have anything to play for, but they could play the spoiler to their rival in Dallas, which could be just enough motivation as there is a piece of hair on my screen. Um, just enough motivation to play hard and win that game, even if they're fighting for a top draft pick, because we saw last year, they really don't care about getting a top draft pick. They could have had it, the number two overall pick, had they not beaten Washington late in the year. They didn't. They got the fourth overall pick. Um, am I salty? Yeah, a little bit. But overall, though, 9-7 and seven for the Cowboys this year. Let me know what you think, though. Do the Cowboys make it back to the playoffs? It's going to be close between them and Philadelphia. Maybe the Dallas could snag one of those wildcard spots, although the NFC is deep this year in 2020. Leave your predictions down below in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. 
Once again, tomorrow we're going to be looking at the Denver Broncos, who are a really interesting team entering this 2020 season. Thank you all so much once again, and we'll see you tomorrow.